Today's presentation is on co-occurring problems. By definition, these are the problems that co-occur with substance misuse. Clients who present with substance abuse problems often deal with additional disorders, such as depression or anxiety. It's called a dual diagnosis or comorbidity. In this presentation, I'll talk about prevalence of such problems. We will also summarize what was covered in this course. A number of problems can co-occur with substance abuse. Sometimes, substance misuse leads to new problems or exacerbates the existing problems. Other times, people use substances as a coping mechanism for psychological distress or other problems. For example, alcohol misuse can contribute to the development or expression of mental disorders. Other times you will hear people talk about feeling less depressed or anxious when they use alcohol. This can be very important for treatment. If anxiety causes alcohol abuse, then it will be very hard to treat alcohol abuse without treating the underlying anxiety. The types of mental disorders that most commonly co-occur with substance misuse and substance use disorder include mood disorders, such as anxiety, depression, and bipolar disorders, thought disorders, including schizophrenia and dementia, personality disorders, such as antisocial and borderline personality disorders, impulse control disorders, bipolar disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, and gambling disorder. Among individuals experiencing an anxiety disorder, almost 15% experienced a substance use disorder during the past year. Additionally, among individuals experiencing a substance use disorder, almost 18% also experienced an anxiety disorder during the past year, and this rose to between 33% to 43% among individuals engaged in treatment. Based on a review of literature, researchers found that depression may co-occur among as many as 55% to 85% of individuals engaged in treatment for substance use disorders. Research into the co-occurrence of schizophrenia and substance use disorder estimated that 47% of individuals with schizophrenia also met criteria for a substance use disorder involving alcohol or illicit substances. This is 4.6 times greater than among the general population. Also, at least 70% of individuals with chronic schizophrenia exhibited nicotine dependence. There is also a significant relationship between alcohol abuse and dementia. Across studies, the prevalence of alcohol use disorder among individuals with dementia ranges from 9% to 22%. Dementia is present in 10% to 24% of individuals with alcohol use disorder. As for cannabis use, some studies suggest that a long-term heavy cannabis use is statistically associated with some cognitive deficits involved with dementia later in life, such as memory, attention, and planful executive functioning tasks. Shorter term, less frequent cannabis use does not seem to generate the same detrimental effects. Some studies even found that cannabis use may help slow the progression of some forms of dementia. Research also found a significant association between personality disorders and substance abuse. As you can see on this slide, rather many people experience both the substance abuse disorder and a personality disorder. Substance use disorder often correlates with impulse control disorders. For example, people with bipolar disorder have periods of mania and impulsivity. During these periods, it is not uncommon for many people to abuse alcohol and drugs. The rate at which ADHD coincides with substance use disorders is also high. The rate of ADHD in the general population is about 5 to 9 percent. But among adults with substance use disorders, it is around 25 percent. Among adolescents with substance use disorders, around 50% have diagnosable ADHD. Post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms include difficulties with concentration, attention and focus, along with anxiety and insomnia or sleep disruption. It appears that alcohol use disorder occurs among 24% to 52% of individuals with PTSD. Nicotine dependence among at least 19%, cannabis use disorder is up to six times more common in this population. Cocaine and opioid use disorders also co-occur with PTSD at relatively high rates. The association between gambling disorder and alcohol or other substance use disorder is well established. 28% of problem gamblers experience an alcohol use disorder, and 17% experience substance use disorder involving illicit substances. Among individuals seeking treatment for problematic gambling or gambling disorder, over 40% meet criteria for lifetime alcohol use disorder and 21% for substance use disorder involving other substances, including nicotine. 
having a lifetime history of substance use disorder, is associated with lower rates of achieving gambling abstinence. Similarly, problems with gambling, predict poorer substance-related treatment outcomes. Several behavioral therapies demonstrated a strong evidence of helping with co-occurring substance use and mental disorders. These therapies include Cognitive behavioral therapy Dialectical behavioral therapy Assertive community treatment Therapeutic communities and Contingency management Aside from the risk of accidental overdose, Misuse of alcohol, prescription or over-the-counter drugs, and other substances potentially takes a toll on physical health. Substance misuse contributes to the risk of developing or complicating other illnesses. Drug and alcohol abuse is associated with higher risk for viral hepatitis, HIV, as well as both bacterial and fungal infections. According to 2016 CDC data, injection drug use was a contributing factor in people acquiring HIV at a 20% rate among men and 21% among women. In addition, substance abuse can affect breathing, heart rate and rhythms, blood pressure, immune system, diabetes, stroke risk, fertility, fetal development, sleep patterns, and cancer. Among all cancers diagnosed in the U.S., 40% are linked to tobacco use. These cancers include cancers of the mouth and throat, esophagus and voice box, lungs, trachea and bronchus, liver, stomach, kidneys, bladder, uterus, cervix, pancreas, colon and rectum, and blood. Alcohol increases the probability of developing cancers of the mouth and throat, esophagus and voice box, liver, colon and rectum, and breasts. Testicular cancer risk is increased with frequent marijuana use. The use of sedative hypnotics may contribute to oral liver and breast cancer. Regular, prolonged opioid and opiate use may contribute to cancers of the bladder, kidney, oral, esophagus, and larynx and pharynx cancers. The anabolic steroids abuse is associated with increased risk of developing liver, testicular, prostate, breast, and colon cancers. It is also associated with more aggressive forms of cancer. Substance misuse is a common cause underlying emergency department visits in the U.S. Approximately 5.1 million drug-related emergency department visits occur each year. Almost 2.5 million of the visits are associated with drug misuse or abuse. 51% involve illicit substances, 51% involve non-medical use of prescription drugs, and over 25% involve drugs combined with alcohol. Traumatic brain injury and substance abuse are two of the leading causes of disability. Substance misuse is a recognized risk factor for traumatic brain injury and, vice versa, traumatic brain injury is a risk factor for substance misuse or substance use disorder. Over 20 million individuals aged 16 and older drive under the influence of alcohol during each year. 12 million drive under the influence of illicit substances, most often marijuana. There are some additional challenges that co-occur with substance misuse. These challenges involve violence exposure and perpetration, such as intimate partner violence. Having alcohol problems was reported by 29% of women who experienced intimate partner violence, and one quarter to half of women receiving IPV victim services also experienced problems with substance misuse. From 55% to 99% of women who experience substance misuse also have experienced IPV during their lives. As many as 36% of women and 1 in 6 men in the U.S. experienced sexual assault during their lifetimes. At least 50% of sexual assaults involves alcohol consumption by the victim, perpetrator, or both. Many individuals engaged in alcohol or other substance misuse are parents or primary caregivers to children or adolescents, and vice versa, over 12% of children under the age of 18 years live with at least one parent experiencing a substance use disorder. Estimates of the proportion of child welfare cases involving parental substance misuse range from 34% to 78%. A parent or caregiver engaged in substance misuse may spend long periods of time unaware of or unresponsive to a child's needs for food, protection, cognitive and language stimulation, discipline and guidance, comfort, health care, school attendance, supervision, and other critical developmental needs. Heavy and frequent alcohol or other substance misuse prior to or during work hours poses significant employment problems, including absenteeism and frequent job changes. 8.5% to 9.3% of workers frequently engage in heavy drinking, 3.6% frequently drink to intoxication, and 9.3% of the workforce may experience an alcohol use disorder. Additionally, 6.3% frequently engage in illicit substance use, 3.5% of the workforce are frequently intoxicated from use of an illicit substance, 
and 2.0% of the workforce may experience a substance use disorder involving illicit substances. A commonly held view is that women engage in street-level prostitution to obtain money to buy drugs or in direct exchange for drugs. Indeed, existing research demonstrates a strong association between substance abuse and prostitution. The substances that women in prostitution most commonly abuse are heroin, cocaine, crack, marijuana, and alcohol. Women, men, children, and adolescents engaging in sex work seldom do so voluntarily. Typically, a high degree of coercion and abuse is involved. Alcohol and other drugs are frequently involved with human trafficking. They are either used to control a person already experiencing substance use disorder, used to coerce someone to initiate use, or used to cope with the physical and psychological traumas associated with trafficking. People with substance misuse problems have a higher risk to lose their home. On the other hand, recovery from substance abuse often depends on people have housing. There is also a strong correlation between substance abuse and involvement with the criminal justice system. An estimated 75% of jail and prison inmates need intervention for substance misuse or substance use disorder, but only about 11% receive these services during their period of incarceration. As we conclude our final course module, let's take the chance to briefly review the vast array of information shared and learned, then identify some ideas for continuing to develop knowledge and skills for working in the substance use, substance misuse, and substance use disorders arena. The original purpose of this course was to explore the theories underlying our understanding of an intervention around substance misuse. We also aim to develop a basic understanding of some of the issues and specific substances commonly involved. Some of what you learned along the way included ethical and professional uses of person-first language related to substance use, misuse, and use disorders, and avoiding casual overuse of labeling language and words. You learned how substance misuse and use disorders are defined and what recovery means. You know how different types of substances are classified. We discussed biological theories, basic neurobiology and neurotransmitters, genetics, and pharmacokinetics. We also examined psychological theories, including cognition, information processing, learning, social learning, psychodynamics, expectancies, and cravings. We talked about social context and environments at the micro, meso, and macro levels, including family, peer, school, workplace, neighborhood, community, and policy. We did discuss social norms, stigma, and social theories. You also learned how an individual's substance misuse affects others in the social and physical environment. We integrated theories into a biopsychosocial framework that can inform prevention, and we discussed the trans-theoretical model of behavior change. In this course, we reviewed major drugs, their effects, prevalence, and approaches to treatment. And finally, you learned about pharmacotherapy approaches, detoxification, co-occurring mental and physical conditions, and other situational challenges. This information represents a strong foundation for understanding and making a difference in substance use, substance misuse, and substance use disorder. What comes next? For some, this degree of being informed is sufficiently satisfying. Others may wish to pursue further knowledge and skills. You now have the foundation for future study concerning topics related to screening, assessment and diagnosis of substance use disorders, planning and implementing interventions and prevention, evaluating interventions and related policies. Whether this is the end of study for you, or you plan to continue on in this arena of study and work, take pride in all that you have mastered through this course. I want to thank you for your interest in this subject area. Too many lives have been lost to substance abuse. Too many lives can still be lost. As social workers, we are in the great position to help our clients recognize the negative effects of alcohol and drugs on their life and lives of people in their environment. We can help and we should help. You had an unusual semester this year, you dealt with challenges and you prevailed. Continue to be Wayne State Warriors. The world needs you. And stay in touch with your professors. We are here to help.